We're inside InterNACHI's free online course, How to Perform Deck Inspections course, and we're under Supports and Connections. Let's take a look at spans and cantilevers. Now, calculating spans and cantilevers for deck beams and deck joists are way beyond the scope of a home inspection. This section of this course will go over some examples of how to calculate span and use a general rule of thumb, but this is another topic that's beyond the scope of a home inspection that is calculating allowed spans and cantilevers. But a home inspector should know what a beam span is. What is a joist span? What's a calculator? And how to divide something by four? And how to divide something like a joist by four? So let's go over beam spans. Maximum allowable spans for wood deck beams are described in the code figure R507.5 and tables R505, R507.51 to R507.54. Wood deck beams can cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the actual beam span. The actual beam span, one fourth of that, they can cantilever on each end. So using the code table below, let's assume that the, the wood is SPF, the species, spruce pine fir, and that the beam size, we're using two two by tens fastened together. So we go to the column there, two two by tens. And the effective joist span is 10 feet in length. Now we're thinking of the beam cantilever, but it's dependent upon the joist span, the effective joist span. Now effective deck joists spans are not the same as actual. Effective is the actual joist span length multiplied by a joist span factor that's in the code. So it's really complicated. But let's simplify it just for this purpose. Let's say that the maximum deck, um, maximum deck, uh, sorry, the effective deck joist span is going to be 10 feet. Again, spruce pine fir, beam size to two by tens, Fasten together, that's the beam. They can cantilever on each end. The maximum deck beam span length is, um, is in relation to the joist span, effective joist span. And let's say it's 10 feet to make it simple. Then the maximum deck beam span length is seven feet, nine inches. Beam plies, like the two 2x10s two that we used in the table, must be fastened together with two rows of 10 penny. That's a penny is a way to measure a length of a nail, three inches, um, minimum 16 inches on center along each edge. So that's our beam. So, well, sorry, we figured out the maximum deck beam span length. Maximum deck beam span length. Okay, let's figure out the cantilevers on each end. Well, that's beam span divided by four. That's seven feet, nine inches divided by four. Beams are permitted to cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the actual beam span. Here's the beam span in the middle of the post, beam span, actual beam span. This is the optional cantilever. It's cantilevered out. And this is the illustration from code. Cantilevers are always based upon the actual span of the beam or the joist. The illustration below is from the 2021 IRC. It's a flush beam, a dropped beam, flush beam, where the ends of the joists are connected to the horizontal beam resting on posts. So this is our beam here, two two by tens fastened together. The joist, um, sorry, um, this is our, um, right, this is our, <laughs> so from the illustration below, this is our beam here, two two by tens horizontally. The ends of the floor joists, the deck joists of the, of the deck are attached to this beam. These are the ends of it, and these are the posts. This is the beam spans, there's optional cantilevers on each side. And this is a flush beam here. So assuming that the maximum deck 
beam span is seven feet, nine inches, seven feet, nine inches, then the beams are permitted to cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the actual beam span, which is seven foot nine divided by four, which is about two feet. So this is about two feet. This is about two feet for almost an eight foot span. It's kind of like L divided by four, right? The one fourth the beam span or the beam span divided by four rule for beam cantilevers is permitted by code. So you get this beam span from post to post divided by four, and that's the optional cantilever at each end of the beam. The beam can cantilever out L divided by four. Joist spans. The maximum span for wood deck joists are shown in this illustration here and in figure R507.6. And it's described in the table in the code R507.6 in the 2021 IRC. A common type of deck designed and observed by home inspectors is shown in this illustration. It's an attached deck. Here's deck joists attached with a flush or dropped beam. Here's the beam here resting on the post. Here's our double two by tens, right? And there's the joist resting on the beam on the post. This is the attachment to the house with uh, a ledger board and joist hangers. That's the primary structure there. And then it's spanned across the joist span to the post and the optional cantilever. And they're banded together. The ends of the joists are banded together by the rim joist. The one fourth, the joist span or joist span divided by four or joist length divided by four for deck joist cantilevers is no longer used. So L divided by four or the beam span divided by four for beam cantilevers that is allowed. But for joist cantilevers, we're no longer doing that divided by four calculation rule of thumb. It's been replaced in the 2021 IRC code with a detailed table full of maximum allowable deck joist spans, cantilevers, and joist backspans for each common joist span. The previous codes limited the cantilever based on joist spacing as opposed to joist span, which is an error. Each joist type now has a maximum joist span and maximum cantilever length. The change in the building code provides more flexibility and accuracy. Deck beams can cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the actual beam span. Deck beams can cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the actual beam span. Deck joist cantilevers are calculated according to code and the table of spans and cantilevers. It's no longer L divided by four. Home inspectors may refer to this old rule, old general rule of thumb during a home inspection for deck joist cantilevers because home inspectors are not code inspectors and are not required to refer to or quote code, including this section about deck joist cantilevers. So we have the old rule of thumb. It's no longer used. Here's the span of the joist. You get the span and divide by four and there you are. It's no longer used. There's the span divided by four. There's the cantilever for the joist. This image here shows a cantilever deck and the general old rule, general of rule of thumb is that cantilever joists should be no more than one quarter of the joist length or the joist span and three times the joist width or the nominal depth. Both conditions, these can be true, but L4, the joist length or the joist span divided by four is no longer used to determine deck joist cantilevers according to the 2021 IRC R507.6. Let's take a look at that table. Here's table R507.6 in the 2021 IRC, maximum deck joist spans. In reference to this table, let's assume the deck is built with 40 PS, PSF, pounds per square foot, live load design. It's 
spruce pine fir. The joist size is two by tens. The allowable joist span here for 16 inches on center for those joists is 13 feet, seven inches. That's the allowable joist span with a spacing of 16 inches on center. Wood frame decks should be designed and built for the live load or the ground snow load that's listed in the code, whichever is greater. So code now has snow loads for decks. So let's be conservative. We have the allowable joist span of 13 feet, seven inches. Let's bring that down to something common, 12 feet at the joist backspan. So if we take this number, bring it to the joist backspan, round it down, the maximum cantilever is three feet. That's also L divided by four, 12 feet divided by four is three feet. The general old rule of one fourth the backspan or L divided by four actually works in this example. Here's a bird's eye view of a deck. So this is the ledger board. The deck joists are attached to the ledger board to the primary structure. They span out to the beam. The beam is two two by tens fastened together. There's some posts resting fully on the, the post, six by six post on a footing. This is the span of the joist. This is the span of the beam, the beam span. And this would be L divided by four, the optional cantilever on each end of the beam span is L divided by four. The cantilever for the floor joist is no longer L divided by four, length divided by four, or span divided by four. It's specifically calculated and listed for common types of joist spans and joist lengths and spacing. So this image here shows a deck joist cantilever in the front of the deck and the deck beam cantilevers on each side of the deck. The deck beams, the beam, is permitted to cantilever at each end up to one fourth of the beam span, the actual beam span. And the deck joists should be cantilevered according to code for maximum deck joist spans and maximum cantilevers. And all of that is way beyond the scope of a home inspection. But at least now we know what a beam span is, a joist span, a cantilever, and how to divide by four if we need to.